Chapter 1, Halloween Once upon a time, there was a very sad little boy named Daniel. He was sad because more than anything, he wished he had been born a girl. In his own mind, he was a girl named Danielle. Daniel didn't have a mommy. She had died when he was born. When he thought about that, it made him sad. But he had a daddy who loved him very much and a grandma too. He didn't see his daddy very often, because his daddy was a very powerful lawyer who worked all the time helping people solve their problems. Daniel often looked at a picture that hung on the wall between his bedroom and his daddy's. It showed his daddy and mommy's faces, side by side. It was amazing how much they looked like each other, except mommy had beautiful makeup and long, beautiful curly dark hair. Daddy's hair was short and kind of thin. Mommy's smile was also a lot bigger than Daddy's. Daniel's grandma lived with them, and she did just about everything a mommy would have done for him. She cooked his meals, read him bedtime stories, and took care of him when he was sick. His favorite story of all was The Marvelous Land of Oz One day, when he was home with a very bad cold, his grandmother came to the moment in the story when the boy Tip was changed into Princess Ozma, Daniel smiled and said, Please read that again, Nana. Oh, of course, child, but why? Because I wish that was me. I wish I could be a princess. Daniel's grandma swallowed hard and paused. She turned the pages back and told the story of Tip's transformation a second time. She didn't say anything to Daniel that day, but when Halloween came, she remembered. At Daniel's school, the second graders were allowed to come to school in costume on Halloween. When that day arrived, Grandma woke Daniel up early and fed him a nice hearty breakfast. Then she drew a bubble bath for him. When Daniel got out of his bath, Grandma unveiled her surprise. He would be going to school this day as a princess. She had bought a beautiful blue gown for him with a full skirt, a long blonde wig, and a tiara that would sit atop it. He had sparkly silver slippers to wear on his feet. Daniel had to sit very still while Grandma applied his makeup. He really felt like a grown-up lady when Grandma had him blot his lipstick on a tissue. Grandma wouldn't let Daniel look at himself in the mirror until his outfit was finished. You look beautiful, Princess Danielle she said. Daniel was so happy he wanted to cry. How had Grandma known about his fondest wish? Everything at school was wonderful. In fact, up until lunchtime, it was the happiest day of Daniel's life. Everyone in his class thought he made a beautiful princess, even the other girls who had come dressed as royalty. Then, in the cafeteria, he was carrying his tray to a table when a fourth grader tripped him. Watch where you're going, faggot, the fourth grader sneered. Daniele had fallen right into the franks and beans on his tray. His beautiful dress was probably ruined. He started to cry. He didn't care about his makeup anymore. He didn't care about anything anymore. He ran for the door of the cafeteria, tears streaming down his face. He ran and he kept running. He thought he was running toward his house, but he soon realized that he didn't recognize any of the streets and houses that he saw. He came to a park he had never been to before, and saw that it sat on the edge of a beautiful lake. There were no people in the park, and a small dock sat in the middle of the park. There was a single small boat tied to the dock. He ran toward the water and thought about jumping in, but instead climbed into the boat, curled up in a ball, and cried himself to sleep. It had been a beautiful fall day when Daniel went to sleep, but he was awakened by a loud crash of thunder. He woke up to find dark clouds covering the skies. It began to rain, in fact, it began to pour. The wind whipped up, and his boat came untied from the dock and drifted onto the waters. Daniel looked around with fear in his heart. Soon he couldn't see any land. Now he was crying again, harder than he had ever cried before. He was afraid he was going to die. When he thought he couldn't cry anymore, he fell asleep again. 
Chapter 2 The Island When Daniel Woke Up The waters were calm and the sky was a brilliant blue, brighter than he ever remembered seeing before. He saw his boat was drifting toward an island. It looked like the most beautiful place he had ever seen. As his boat got closer to the shore, he could see a woman waiting for him with a broad smile on her face. She had long flowing red hair, green eyes, and was wearing the most beautiful white lace gown he had ever seen. As he boat touched the shore, the woman smiled, extended her hand, and said, Hello, Danielle, we've been waiting for you. I'm sorry your journey was so difficult, but you're safe now, and you will always be safe here. Where am I? Daniel said, not yet taking the stranger's hand. The woman smiled sweetly. This is the island of Jandora, where boys and girls can become who they were always meant to be. Daniel didn't know what those words meant, but somehow, he knew this was where he was supposed to be. He took the woman's hand and stepped onto the shore. At that moment, something amazing and wonderful happened to Daniel. A tingling started at his feet and moved quickly to the top of his head. He felt warm all over. When the tingling and the warmth faded away, he realized that something was different. It wasn't just that his dress was brilliant and beautifully new again. It was what was underneath the dress. Daniel was now a girl, a real girl. Yes, Danielle, the woman said, here you are a girl and will always be a girl. You may live here forever and be who you were meant to be. What about my daddy and Nana? They will be able to visit you here, but if they come to stay, they will change too. This made Danielle sad. She wanted to be her true self, a girl, more than anything, but she loved her daddy and Nana very much and would miss them terribly. She decided to see what Jen Dora was like before making a decision. The beautiful lady, who said her name was Renee, drove Danielle from one end of the island to the other in a fancy golf cart. People walked, rode bikes and scooters and golf carts, but there didn't seem to be any cars on the island. The island wasn't very big, but it seemed to have everything a little girl could want and need, including a school, a playground, parks, an ice cream shop and a pizza parlor, a library, and the biggest most wonderful toy store Danielle had ever seen, filled with all kinds of dolls and other wonderful girl toys. When the tour was finished, Renee brought Danielle to a small brick apartment building. You can live here for now, she told the new girl. Mrs. Roberts takes care of the boys and girls who live here. She will cook your meals, take care of you, and love you. She will make sure you have everything you need. Danielle thanked Renee and hugged her. She couldn't understand why she felt so happy and sad all at the same time. Chapter 3 Daddy comes to visit at the end of Danielle's second day on the island, Renee came to visit her. She took her into the large living room of the apartment house and had Danielle sit next to her on a couch. She thought Danielle looked beautiful in her black velvet dress with a lace panel inset, white tights, and black patent leather shoes. Are you happy, Danielle? Oh yes, Renee, I'm very happy. But I sure do miss my daddy and Nana. How would you like to talk to your daddy right now? Oh, yes. I would like that very much. Renee reached into the bag she carried and pulled out an iPad. She tapped it a couple of times and handed it to Danielle. She saw her father's face fill the screen. Hi Danielle, honey. Are you okay? Yes, daddy. I'm really fine. Everybody here is so nice. And I'm so happy to really be a girl. She saw her daddy smiled and wondered how he could be smiling and still look so sad. That's great, honey. Would you like me to come visit you? Oh yes, daddy, I would like that very much. Great. Now his smile looked happy. Tomorrow is Saturday. I'll be there first thing in the morning. I can't wait to see my girl. Danielle and Renee were at the dock bright and early the next day to greet Daddy's boat. 
Danielle wore green slacks and a silky white blouse with ruffles, and Danielle was in her red and white dress, even though Renee told her it was okay to wear slacks on the weekend. Renee smiled at the memory, she remembered the time when she never wanted to ever wear anything but a pretty dress. The young girl looked up into the woman's bright, happy face. Renee, how can Daddy visit here without being turned into a girl? Renee nodded and pointed toward the ground where a round platform appeared, hovering several inches off the ground. Your daddy will need to stay on this when he's on the island. If his feet ever touch the soil of Gendora, he will be transformed into a woman, but as long as he stays on this platform, nothing will happen to him. Danielle nodded. She thought this was the most amazing place in the world. Soon the boat arrived and Danielle's daddy, whose name was Andrew, was at the shore. Hello, Andrew, and welcome to Gendora, Renee said. Please step onto this platform and remain on it during your visit. Daddy stepped onto the platform and crouched down, extending his arms toward his daughter. Hello, sweetheart. He hugged the girl as tightly as he could. You are such a beautiful, beautiful girl. I love you so much. Over the next several hours, Renee, Danielle, and Andrew traveled from one end of the island to the other. Andrew met his daughter's teacher, Mrs. Roberts, the woman who looked after her at the apartment building, and many of Danielle's classmates. As evening approached, he knew the time for him to go home was almost here. His shoulders slumped as they headed toward the shore. He was fighting back tears, he didn't want his daughter to see how sad leaving made him. Renee had told him that he could come visit any time he wanted, so he knew he would never be far from his daughter. He gave his girl a long, long hug. Then he stood up. But instead of stepping into the boat, he stepped off the platform and was instantly transformed into a beautiful woman with long curly dark hair just like the woman in the picture at home. She wore a deep blue velvet dress. Daddy! Danielle cried. But W.H. Hush, child, the former male said as he reached for her daughter. You can call me mommy now. She nodded at Renee and said, and how about if you call me Alice? This is certainly a wonderland. Alice looked at her child. Now to let you in on a secret. Your mommy really did die when you were born, but that woman in the picture wasn't her. It was me. I adopted you right after you were born. She could see the girl was puzzled. She continued, like you, I wanted to be a girl, no, I knew I was a girl, from the time I knew the difference between boys and girls. What about Nana? What's going to happen to her? Nana knows about me just like she knew about you, and she encouraged me to come here to live with you and be your mommy. I've made enough money that she never has to worry about anything ever, for the rest of her life. We'll talk to her on Skype every day, and she can come visit anytime she wants. Renee smiled. You won't be going back to your room at the apartment house, Danielle, Renee said. We've got a beautiful cottage waiting for you and your mommy. With a picket fence? And a white cat? Yes, and yes, she said with a laugh. And every Barbie doll, outfit and accessory you can imagine. It's all waiting for you. Now, go, and be happy. Danielle took her mother's hand, and they walked down the lane together toward their new home and their new future. And they did indeed live happily ever after.